Well, football fans, get ready. You're about to see a lot more real-time data on your screens this fall. Zebra Technologies is teaming up with the NFL as their official Internet of Things partner. The company's CEO joins us now. Anders, good to see you. Thank you. So what kind of data will we see this fall when we're watching NFL games on television? So the, there will be different data available uh, for TV or for in-stadium or for use on Xbox or fantasy football. But basically the data we can provide is around you know, how fast somebody's running, how fast they're accelerating, you know, the, how, how, you, how far they run. You can compare first quarter versus last quarter. Uh, so in, any movement data uh, and eventually also we will track the ball and the ball flight. So earlier this uh, summer, the CEO of Under Armour yeah. said that they're the perfect company to create the connected health dashboard. Sure. So are there opportunities beyond the NFL uh, with partners like Under Armour or Nike? Absolutely. We have com conversations with uh, companies like that to make sure we can get put uh, more leads into our, our uh, sensors. So you can you know, do temperature sensors and other things like that uh, to provide more, more data, but also that we maybe more for, for, uh, for coaching, which is one of the use cases also. So is there potentially a time where we might see some of your small devices embedded in some of the clothing that some of these companies are creating? I think that's highly, highly likely. What's the opportunity to replace uh, products like a Fitbit or a Jawbone? So it's like the different use cases. You know, what we do is that we, we really track the movement in with high level of precision within a defined space, like a stadium. So we can, you know, down to half a foot of accuracy, we can decide you know, where, where somebody is and exactly how fast they're running and so forth. Fitbit tends to be a bit more about your personal uh, movements over a, a, you know, through the city in a day, but it's not as accurate uh, on any specific uh, movement or any how many steps you take and so forth is more approximate. Now, apart from sports, you also work with about 95% of the Fortune 500 companies, a lot of those hotels. One of those is Caesars. Yep. What do you do with them and how do you help them with their business? So generally what we do for, for, for you know, industry, for our companies uh, that we serve, it's similar to what we do for uh, the NFL. We really help them increase visibility into their operations by really connecting the physical world to the digital world. Uh, Caesars, as an ex example, they have put in our wireless LAN infrastructure, our Wi-Fi systems. So they have, you know, every room has an access point. because so Their view was that now consumers, or their patrons are... They're using Wi-Fi so much more. Uh, they're driving so much more bandwidth. They're uploading and sending pictures, watching video, uh, watching movies in the room. So they need to have much greater connectivity. And basically, that's what the kind of solutions we provide for our customers across all sorts of industries. We saw shares hit 119 bucks back in June. Uh, they're down at about 80 bucks and change right now. What are the institutional investors missing? Well, I, I say you know what. Uh, what we're doing now is that we're you know, focusing very much on integrating the company. You know, we acquired uh, Motorola's Enterprise, uh, Motorola Solutions Enterprise business at the end of last year. Uh, the integration has gone really, really well so far. Uh, our customers have been very pleased with what we can do, as, as has our partners. Uh, I think that's been manifesting itself in very strong top-line growth. We had 11% uh, constant currency growth in the, in the second quarter. You know, basically three of our regions grew very he healthily. Uh, our three largest product segments grew very healthily. And uh, we, uh, we had some one-time items uh, around purchase accounting uh, and uh, rebranding that brought down the, the margins a bit. And we were also more successful winning some larger deals for some of our newer um, Android-based smartphones or, or uh, ruggedized devices that uh, put some pressure on, on our margins. But those were because we won some very large deals. It's been about a year now since that Motorola yeah. purchase. How is that integration going? Is it on track? It's very much on track. Uh, so we've, 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 the biggest um, priority first was to make sure we can you know, get growth into the business again. That was a top priority. We feel we've done that. We've grown very nicely. So at 11% in Q2, we had good growth in first quarter and fourth quarter also. Uh, execution is an equal strong focus area for us. Make sure we can integrate uh, the company, the, the organizations. Uh, we have seen um, you know, good uh, synergy capture. Uh, we have a laser focus on making sure that we, you know, really drive our margins, so we can, uh, you know, uh, so we can get the, 
the cash flow and the earnings that our investors would like and expect. Um, and then we also work very hard on uh, the broader culture aspects of the business, make sure we integrate the, uh, the organization and create the culture that is really the culture we want versus what would otherwise just kind of uh, be, be by default. You mentioned strong growth around the world. Where do you see the most opportunity over the next year in any particular region? And you know, you also mentioned the, the currency um, yeah. FX changes where you had to raise prices in Europe yep. uh, because of the weaker euro. Um, do you expect to see any more price increases? Well, as, as long as the euro stays where it is today, I don't expect so. You know, Europe has actually been very health, growing very healthily for us over the last year. Uh, somewhat surprising, people think, because you know, the economy in Europe has not been quite as, as strong, maybe. But uh, the, the business leaders I talk to feel that Europe has probably gone, uh, you know, are now on an improving pace. And you know, we have the benefit that our products help customers improve their, their businesses in good times and bad times. So in good times, people... You know, add retail stores, they add uh, new hospitals, manufacturing facilities in tough times. It's more how, how can we help them drive greater efficiencies and help them grow better. So um, you know, Europe has been strong, but I would say Asia Pac from a region perspective is the one we expect to have the highest growth for the next uh, several uh, years. But uh, if you look at a product perspective, uh, there's a strong trend towards mobility. Uh, you know, we do a lot of things for, to help our customers be, move um, solutions to be with the people where they can have the biggest impact so they can make to get the right information at the right time where they can actually use it and uh, we see great opportunities around uh, the need to upgrade some uh, older operating systems uh, to newer ones so over the next uh, five four years now uh, basically there's 15 million units of older uh, operating systems that needs to be up they will going to go out of service and they all need to be upgraded by 2020 and if the economic life of your device is four years or more, you don't want to wait too long. So we expect that uh, Android and Microsoft 10 will be the two be main beneficiaries of that. And we, we have a, an OS agnostic perspective. So we want to serve our customers with whatever, whatever OS they decide to go with. Anders Gustafsson, CEO of Zebra Technologies, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.